So right now I'm uh, I have started the recording. Let's say. Okay. Um, I think. Uh, uh, apart from one of the followers, all of the others are there. Uh, yes. Even though I I didn't have the feedback of Bergen. Um, is Christos there? Uh, Christos couldn't join today, unfortunately. So the the presentation okay. on the Stop It Virtual Machine and the Work Packets Four tools will be given by uh, Dia from ICCS. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay yeah. then. Uh, Mekti, would you like yeah. to start? Uh, well, can uh, Can I make you a presenter yes. so you can share some slides or? No, that's all right. Uh, okay. It's more about giving an update uh, about the work package eight. Uh, okay. Great. And to inform the followers uh, who are here. Uh, okay, as you may have understood uh, from the uh, project, uh, we are we faced actually some delays with regards to the some to some solutions in work package package uh, five and six uh, especially the virtual machine in those uh, in those work packages then uh, we decided to uh, provide you with the training material especially with regards to work package four which is on the strategic and tactical level if you may remember for those of you who are new in this uh, in this uh, this project, I think some of uh, some of you are not uh, very familiar with the structure of the project. We are providing ten modules uh, as solutions in a Stop It project. Module one, that uh, as you can see on the on the right picture over there, where in it's very small, but. Uh, you will you will see that picture again. I can make it yes. a bit larger. Yes. Uh, perfect. So module one, which covers uh, work package four, is about uh, risk assessment and tre treatment framework in a strategic and tactical level, and this is the focus of today's session. The other modules, module two to nine, they are coming from work package five and a little bit work package six uh, in a stop it project and we will focus on those uh, in a later session so they are not the focus of today's meeting in work package four uh, as uh, my colleague dia will talk about we are dealing with the risk assessment and management in a strategic tactical level and this is very much related to uh, the, your profile uh, because in work package 8 now I'm focusing on work package 8 within task 8.1 we designed the training material uh, requirements uh, and we identified three profiles for each utility uh, decision makers as the first profile the, the risk assessment officers as the second profile and the, the, the staff responsible for real-time operations as the third profile. And today, again, we are just focusing on risk assessment officers training. Then in this was the outcome of uh, task 8.1 uh, that is available publicly in deliver, deliverable 8.1. Uh, and there is a very specific type of training activities for risk assessment officers, which is more or less related to work package four and its material. In task 8.2, uh, if you, some of you, you remember that we delivered the very, very first uh, training session in Athens uh, this June for the profile decision makers. So up to now, that's what has happened. And we, we are a little bit delayed with the training activities uh, as for now because of the accumulative de delay in other uh, aspects of the project. But now we are back on track. We try to catch up with the delay and uh, we are providing this first training session and a virtual machine that uh, Dia will talk about that uh, later. That's all from my side, uh, Dimitris. All right, thank you, Mekti, for this short introduction. And I would like to welcome our uh, colleagues from Masagra. Uh, they are here, as I saw. So um, every follower is represented, let's say. I'm going to... Um, 
also have uh, presentations on the overview of the first training event. So I'm going to talk about the specific event and I'm going to repeat some of the things that uh, Mehdi has said. Um, also looking at work package eight and its place in stop it as well as what we're going to present today and the user profiles uh, before giving the floor for uh, Dia uh, from ICCS, which is going to be more specific about what you're going to see, the tools that you're going to uh, see an experience and eventually use as part of stop it so let me uh, briefly share my uh, other presentations with you so uh, is everybody uh, able to see the slides i suppose so yes all right yes thank you um so welcome to this event um we have already started. And as you know, Work Package 8 is a training and transfer activity. Uh, uh, work Package focusing mainly on the activities for the followers. So we base the tasks on three main um, categories. Let's say the first one is that we have tasks where we uh, develop training methods and materials. And this is done mainly in tasks 8.1 and 8.2. 8.1, the task from Sintef, which has been already completed. Uh, but also uh, task 8.2, which deals with the development of training materials and knowledge transfer products, um, which actually develops the, the videos, the webinars for the Stopic products. This is done by ICCS and it's still underway. Task 8.1 was more about um, the defining the training requirements and the templates for materials, but also identifying the, the end user profiles, the target groups for our activities that you're going to see in a while. We also have a, a task that undertakes the knowledge and transfer exercises in a close collaboration with the followers. This is what we do in task 8.3. And this is uh, an event of this task today. Uh, this um, task is uh, being led by KWR and we have started in month 24. So it's very recent, but it's better to be proactive and keep um, showing you what we have on the table uh, at this point rather than wait for a later stage. And finally, we have to embed these training materials that have been developed in previous tasks uh, into wider educational platforms at an EU level. Uh, this is task 8.4 and it comes at a, at a much later stage, let's say. Uh, and some other prerequisites for this uh, work package, as this uh, work package comes a bit late and deals with uh, train, uh, training material for uh, tools that are already there, it uh, requires the mature product of for packets four, five, and six. Uh, so, so if we have any delays in uh, delivering a uh, uh, stable version of these uh, tools, then we cannot proceed to the, the training events. This is uh, self-explanatory as Mehdi also has explained. So we based our activities on the findings and the tools of work packet three, uh, four, which has a strategic and tactical tools and five, work packet five has the operational tools. Uh, but also in work package eight, uh, six, which uh, has the integrated platform with the uh, modules that Mehdi has described. Uh, and what work package eight does it, uh, it that it creates the learning material for these products, but it also maps it to uh, the different needs of the end users. So the, the different profiles that we're going, that Mehdi has already explained that we're going to see in a while. Uh, and of course, uh, Work Package 8 benefits from the technology and the early lessons uh, uh, that are being uh, uh, given in Work Package 7. Work Package 7 is also a late package. It deals with the demonstration activities, but now to the front runners. So we are closely collaborating with this uh, also when it comes to the virtual machine, uh, the virtual machine, say. And as Mehdi has explained in Work Package 8, um, Task 8.1 has identified three profiles. Uh, the first one is the, the high-level decision-maker uh, profile that deals mostly with awareness raise, uh, raising. Uh, we have the second profile of the risk management officers. This is both on the strategic and the tactical level, as well as the risk modelers that support them on the water utilities. And this is a user profile that um, deals with four packets, four tools that uses them to identify risk, to calculate and to mitigate it. And the third uh, profile is the, the staff responsible for real-time operations. These, uh, these people are mostly interested in the operational tools of Work Package 5. And uh, as Mehdi has already explained, 
Today we are doing a training activity of the second uh, profile for the risk management officer. So we are mainly going to focus on the on the work package uh, four tools as they are uh, represented in in the virtual machine. This is the way to get to them. This is a way to use them, which has been developed as part of work package. Uh, so you've, over, you've already seen the agenda. We are in step two. We are describing the, the first training event and what's going to happen today. And uh, then we are going to give the floor to Dia, who is going to present an overview of the Work Package 4 tools, as well as the Stop It platform as a whole and the virtual machine. And then uh, we're actually going to have a live demo of the virtual machine and its use with uh, Georgios from ICCS. And uh, Dia will have a presentation of about 20 to 30 minutes, followed by the live demonstration, which should be from 40 to 60 minutes. And then we're going to close with an open discussion session based on the time that we have available for the slot. Um, of course, short questions at the end of each step are very welcome, but I'm going to keep them short in order not to uh, obstruct the flow of the webinar. And we're going to have uh, more feedback at the end of uh, this session in the open discussion sec uh, session that we uh, described. Uh, but it's also useful to see what we're going to do today in a more general overview of uh, what the training event is um, for the followers. So uh, what we described today is the first event in a series of task 8.3 actions with more being planned in 2020. Also um, taking uh, into uh, Account. Yes, of course, I see a question from Patrick. Uh, of course, you can use the chat to put your questions uh, when uh, we uh, go on with the presentations. And I will be able to see them and discuss them at the end of each step, but also at the open discussion session at the end. So um, the general overview is that this is the first event in a series of Task 8.3 actions. We will plan more. Well, also, when we have uh, mature products for uh, from War Packets, uh, for packages five and six. And for this particular event, we have three educational goals. We want to, uh, uh, for the followers to obtain insight on how the virtual machine and the work packets four tools, the strategic and tactical tools function. And we decided to do so in the form of a webinar that we're having today. So where we, you filled your doodle, your uh, time availability in the doodle, then we created this uh, go to meeting webinar that's being recorded and is uh, training material by itself. Uh, the second step that follows is that you get hands-on experience in the Stop It Virtual Machine. And we plan to do this after the webinar in the weeks that are coming with the daily session where each follower gets a different day and he can access the virtual machine himself. So you can get some uh, time with the virtual machine. You can access it yourself. You can access different tools, the one that you are interested in and you can uh, use them based also on the information provided to you by the webinar. So you're going to fill your availability again. Uh, once more, I'm going to send a doodle to you, and then you're going to choose a time slot. Uh, the time slot has to be different for each follower because we cannot allow two parties at the same time to access the virtual machine. And then you'll be able to, um, to have some time with it to, uh, to explore the different tools that are available at this time. And the third step is actually for the followers to get support and offer feedback from this whole experience with the virtual machine. So we do this by offering support hours for each daily session in collaboration with ICCS. Uh, Georgios, um, uh, an expert from ICCS, will be available uh, at the same time that you will be given the slot to support you in a number of fixed hours. Um, but also he will receive your feedback and be able to respond to your question in case you have any technical problems accessing the virtual machine or if you have a specific tool problems, let's say. And at the end of um, this uh, series of actions, when you have explored the virtual machine, when all of the followers have done so, you're going to fill an assessment form. Then we're going to have another round of emails and you're going to give your uh, complete uh, feedback from this experience. What have you learned? Uh, what would you like to see in an improved way, etc. So this, these are the three uh, steps that we plan to take. The first one, we are taking it today. And these are the slides that I had so far. Um, thank you for your attention. I'm going to uh, uh, give the floor to Dia now to continue with a more specific uh, overview of the Stop It Virtual Machine and the Work Package 4 tools. So, um, 
please bear with me as I give some rights to Dia. Thank you, Dimitris. Yes, Dia, you are now a presenter, so can you share your screen? Yes, great. I think so that I've started. Yes, I can see it. Great, thank you all. Thank you, Dimitris. Uh, thank you, Menti, for this introduction. Sorry, before starting, um, do we have any questions yes. that, that relate to Menti and me for uh, Work Packets 8 and the activities? I guess not at this stage. All right, then uh, I think we can uh, proceed with the uh, presentation of uh, Dia. Dia, the floor is Great. yours. Thank you, Dimitris. Thank you. So, as Dimitrios and uh, Mekti said, uh, this presentation is uh, about an introduction to Work Packets 4 tools and to the demo activities that uh, uh, will follow right afterwards. Now, uh, Stop It and the project partners have brought a whole range of technologies and expertise, which will eventually form the key modular components uh, of the integrated Stop It platform. Uh, Stop it modules can be grouped into two main categories, the ones covering real-time operational needs and decision-making, and the solutions that support uh, strategic tactical planning and post-action assessment. Now, today we're going to focus on module one, which uh, consists of uh, Work Package 4 tools, uh, basically, and aims at assisting the users in the process of uh, risk identification, vulnerability assessment, consequence analysis, risk evaluation, and treatment analysis and evaluation. Now, uh, the Work Package 4 has developed uh, the Stop It Risk Assessment and Treatment Framework, which is being implemented through several components uh, that have been developed uh, under the different uh, tasks of Stop It in collaboration with many partners. Uh, those are the risk identification database, which is practically a repository of cyber-physical uh, events. Uh, the InfraRisk CP, uh, which uh, assists users for generic risk assessment of cyber-physical events. It is the asset vulnerability assessment tool, uh, which uh, enables you to assess assets and system vulnerability. It's a fault tree editor for fault trees development. Uh, it's a scenario planner for enhanced navigation on potential threats, cascading effects and pathways of systems and failures examined. A cyber physical stress testing platform uh, for um, simulating events. Uh, metrics and key performance indicators uh, to assess the performance of the network a risk reduction measure database for the identification of appropriate risk reduction measures, and finally, uh, the risk analysis and evaluation toolkit uh, with state-of-art models and tools for risk analysis and evaluations. As you can see, uh, Work Package 4 and uh, some tasks of Work Package 3 and 6 have delivered uh, a whole range of tools uh, in order to assist in all these processes. Now, this is the conceptual diagram of uh, the high-level use cases of Module 1. Uh, RIET is practically a toolkit which includes or gives access to all the tools that we're going to see today. Uh, the major processes that can be implemented by the user while using the RIET is uh, to start by estimating the assets vulnerability of the network. Uh, this is implemented through the AVA tool. Unfortunately, this is uh, an EU-restricted deliverable, therefore it is not included in our today's demo. The second step of user is to be navigated through the potential risks through the fault reviewer module, which is embedded in the scenario planner, and then design and configure risk scenarios through the scenario manager. Uh, the scenario planner is interconnected with all the content of the risk uh, identification database and the risk reduction measure database, which is uh, needed while building a scenario. Um, after creating the scenario, the user, uh, with all the content of the RIDP and RMD, uh, uh, and after they have built the scenario, uh, they are able to simulate seamlessly the cyber-physical events that have been defined in the scenario by using the stress testing platform and then uh, visualize and assess systems response through the KPI tool, which enables users to understand the actual impact of the event and the simulated scenario that had to their systems. All the above steps can be repeated as many times as the user wants, 
And there is also the possibility uh, of including new measures into the network topology in case we want to run a, a scenario that uh, includes a, a new countermeasure in our network. Uh, now, this is the home page of RAED through which the user can access the tools. Uh, this can be done by using either the main menu or through the icons. Uh, this is something that will be demonstrated later on by our colleague George. Now, before going into greater detail on the tools, let's have a look on how risks have been defined in RAED. Now, in order to assist utilities during the step of risk identification, we have utilized the content and the structure of the RIDP. We have followed the structured process of converting the RIDP content to fault trees. Uh, the fault trees were created by using the fault tree editor tool, which has been delivered by RISA, and uh, we eventually built the stop it generic fault trees. While building them, the fault trees have been enriched with additional events and apart from the events and through the structure of the fault tree structures, the user can visualize also the causal relationships of events and the pathways of failures. Now, this is the interface of the fault tree viewer, uh, which is depicted in this image. Uh, RED uh, has uh, already inside uh, two uh, fault trees, uh, the one covering quality issues and uh, one covering quantity issues. Uh, the fault reviewer is practically a user-friendly graphical environment for investigating interconnected events that might lead to a water quantity or quality issue. Uh, apart from the fault trees uh, that have already been uploaded, the user can create or edit their own fault trees by using uh, the fault tree editor, uh, the same tool that we used and uh, has been delivered uh, in Stopit and then upload the created fault trees to the scenario planner for further use. Now, after exploring potential risks, the user can then create a scenario, define within the scenario the details of the cyber-physical event that takes place in the network, define the assets that are affected, and finally, uh, define the simulation parameters. Something important to mention here is that uh, before setting and running a new scenario, there is also the need to have already simulated the business as usual scenario, which is practically the attack free state of the network. This is something that uh, has already been created for the benchmark network we are going to see today, and it is available for you, so there is no need of going into further detail uh, on this now. So, after we have explored the risk through the fault trees and we have designed the desired scenario, we are ready to run it. Uh, this is uh, the interface of the scenario manager where we can launch the simulation of the scenario in the stress testing by clicking on the running man icon. While the simulation is in progress, the icon becomes red and blinks. In the scenario manager, we can see the list of scenarios that we have created along with their description, and access also the tools to manage them, such as uh, the functionality of deleting a scenario, uh, to clone a scenario, to edit, and so on. Through this page, we can select to see the results of the scenarios or launch the KPI tool to further examine them in detail. We are going to demonstrate all this a bit later. Now, moving to the next slide, here we have selected to visualize the key results through the interface of the scenario planner. Uh, in this spider chart, we can see the results of three different scenarios overlapping and uh, some results in a table format. Alternatively, uh, we may launch the KPI tool to, to examine the results in detail. Now, before going into further detail in terms of the KPI tool, let's have a quick look on the framework that has been developed behind it. Within Stopit, we are working on water, on water network systems. The primary services of utilities are to provide customers with water of sufficient quality and quantity. Based on that, we have two major uh, types of key performance as indicators. The ones trying to capture the system's performance in terms of covering demand, and the ones uh, related to the quality of water. For both these services, we can establish two service levels. Uh, one level corresponding to complete service failure, in other words, no demand covered or that the water supply is polluted. 
and uh, the partial service failure, which means that the customer's demand has been partially covered or that customers have a substandard supply in terms of quality. Based on those levels, the users, in other words, the utilities, can assess the performance of their network under different scenarios and, in fact, map the results on various dimensions. For example, based on those I mentioned, uh, the users might check uh, which parts of the network and how many customers are affected and for how long. Now, one of the primary advantages of this framework, apart from giving detailed insights to the system performance, is that uh, all service levels can be defined by the users. Uh, this means that the service levels can be adapted to any user needs and uh, to be applied to any site or network. For example, one case might have a different service level below which customers do not open their tab or to have different threshold below customers are not fully satisfied, uh, causing, um, in other words, some reputational damage to the utility. In this image, we can see the graphical user's interface of the tool, where the users uh, define the different service levels and uh, thresholds. Uh, those levels can be differentiated um, for different districts of the system. In other words, the tool enables the users to create different areas of the system through the user's interface. Uh, for each area, different service levels can be defined, and then the users may visualize results at the level of districts or the entire network and assess its performance. In order to perform this assessment and visualize what uh, was the impact of an attack, we have to upload two result files one corresponding to the attack-free state of the network and uh, the other with the results of the scenario that we have simulated in previous steps. Now, this is the interface of the tool after we have assessed the results. Uh, George will demonstrate it later and explain what uh, its graphics is all about. Uh, this is a print screen of the tool that uh, corresponds to a quantity issue assessment whereas this corresponds to a quality uh, issue. Another major functionality of the KPI tool is that uh, automatically generates report with all the results and the outcomes of the assessment that can be used by the personnel of the utility and support their communication. Again, the content of the report can be tailored to the utility's preferences. Now, after we ha having fulfilled all these steps, or whenever desired, the user can also explore through the environment of Riot uh, the different countermeasures that can be uh, implemented in each case. Uh, Riot, apart from giving full access to the list of measures, it also provides uh, users with the search page that supports multiple filtering capabilities. Now, the user can deploy this functionality, filter, and identify the measures that, that cover their needs, and then check the detailed information for each measure. Now, all the tools that we have presented today have been installed in a virtual machine environment that can be accessed by you remotely without the need of installing anything to your computer. In the following days, we will send to you the credential, as Dimitrio said, that you will need in order to log in uh, the system and launch the Riot and the tools included. George will demonstrate it all this uh, in a few minutes. Now, apart from the virtual machines, we have also prepared supportive material for you to help you to test the tools functionalities. In order to assist you on this as much as possible, we have developed a video with callouts providing an overview of what uh, you can do with Riot and uh, the module on this specifically. We have created a step-by-step -step guide on how to execute different scenarios of use. Uh, additionally, we, we will send you also the manuals of the tools. And uh, finally, we have also included test data in the virtual machines in order to be able to use the tools and focus on their functionalities and not uh, uh, waste time in creating uh, your own data, at least at this stage. Now, in more detail, uh, the video of Riot uh, will help you get familiar with the software interfaces and introduce you uh, how to create, simulate, and assess a cyber-physical uh, scenario. 
The step-by-step -step document will guide you how to actually use the tools. In other words, how to launch them and perform all the actions that will be demonstrated in a while. Uh, the full guide uh, of RIDE provides additional and detailed information on the tools per se and details on its development. Similarly, additional information is provided in the manual of the KPI tool to know more about the framework and the development of the tool. And as we said, all required data are included. So we are ready to start exploring the tools. So that is from my side. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, thank you, Dia, for this uh, interesting and content-rich uh, presentation. Uh, do we have any questions for uh, Dia at this stage? Uh, no, so um, I, then we can proceed with the, the live demonstration of the virtual machine that has been described. Uh, then I'll give the rights to uh, George Moraiti so he can uh, he can do a live demo. Uh, George, I see that you are uh, offline. Are you here, George? Uh, Dimitri, yes. Uh, just give me a few minutes because uh, we had the connection. Mm -hmm. uh, with the internet connection issue, uh, okay. I'm with yeah. my laptop and I have my my phone as a hotspot. But okay. yes, All right. Uh, George is back, I think. So. Uh... Um, can you hear me now? Uh, yes, George, we can hear you. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so uh, you must have started seeing my screen as well. Uh, I can, and yes. Because, I because I've started sharing, so everything is okay, everything is set? Yes. Can you just uh, talk a little bit louder? A I bit louder? Yes, that's the first no, <laughs> for me. <laughs> Is this better? Yes, yes, I think you were a little bit okay. far from my okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, hello, I'm George. I'm part of the uh, World Packets 4 team uh, responsible for the development of the offline strategic and operational. Uh, tools <clears throat> against uh, cyber physical threats and uh, as all previous uh, speakers have said uh, we are here to demonstrate the available tools that have been developed uh, in the work packets 4 and are included in a VM now uh, the VM is just another computer another hardware and software that is simply not there in front of us but we can access it remotely so as such uh, i will demonstrate to you now how uh, to enter the uh, vm we simply use the remote desktop connection it is already installed in any windows uh, environment and we simply select the computer name, the username, and then enter the credentials that will be provided to you. Um, I have already saved the password just for my convenience, uh, but you will be requested to enter the, the password. And now we are connected to a remote desktop. So uh, as we see, the Riot Bats is already running, so everything is set, and you can access the Riot services through any uh, web browser. So you can simply use the, the Edge browser, and the Riot is there. So this is the main page of Riot, and as you can see, everything is structured in the manner DIA already. Uh, sorry, just let me hide these and these. And I'm sure this is better now. Um, so uh, the flow of the tool is as Dia described. We start by identifying and exploring risks and cascading failures. We move uh, on building scenarios specific to our network. 
make the analysis of a cyber physical attack and the simulation and then evaluate the results uh, assess the results uh, based on our uh, on our preferences on its user's preference uh, in order to demonstrate the risk criteria that characterize the organization uh, and the perspective uh, each individual has now after this one may explore the already available list of measures uh, embedded in the riot relevant to the scenario so this is what we are going to see today we are going to see how riot functionalities can be utilized and how it can be used uh, in order to demonstrate the uh, the above process as mentioned now uh, this is the home page the first step is identifying the risks so one may enter and see the full tree structure of the uh, risks identified we can find the ones related to quality issues and as you may see uh, the faulty structures are quite a uh, big and complicated structure for which failures cascade from one step to another uh, in a boolean uh, logic so we can either have uh, an, an end condition which uh, more than one events need to occur simultaneously in order for the event to cascade or a simple or gate as we call them for which uh, one of uh, the many events can lead to a problem now the lesson is there for you uh, for more explanations uh, anytime you need it you simply click the legend button located uh, at the bottom left and you can find it now uh, once you go over a, a basic event uh, you may see some additional information besides the ID and the uh, description. You can see the asset that, it's, uh, that it affects in the event type. And also on the left, if you see uh, the box shows the 11 steps originating from basic event uh, 26, which is a serious spill from uh, an inter interconnected industry uh, to uh, the uh, to the water surface and as you can see after uh, step six uh, there's a conditional uh, event for which more than just uh, the spill of an industry needs to occur in order to have an availability of drinking water so uh, one may move along and find the the additional steps needed for the event to occur but of course uh, we can have much simpler uh, events uh, such as the ones located at the top of the full tree so uh, let's go here and see that simply uh, somebody can manipulate the water tank level sensor and then uh, the PLC is leaded and the storage tank fails so unavailability will occur to the system it's a simple but effective uh, event that cascades to the world distribution network now as you may see uh, the event turned red simply because i clicked it clicking on an event will bookmark it uh, because i may find it interesting and uh, worth exploring later so riot dynamically uh, uses the information from each component to build scenarios, to run scenarios, to simulate, to evaluate scenarios. So one of the key components is exploring the entire fault tree and selecting the events that are of interest to you, such as the ones here, uh, basic event 235 of an external person uh, manipulating uh, a water tank level sensor, uh, or having a DOS attack in a pumping station or physically destroying a pump so those are bookmarked and the riot uh, keeps this information that those events are of interest to you now of course you can uh, go explore other full trees such as the uh, ones related to the quality of the uh, water supply and as you can see the same structure and logic applies here as well now 
once we have bookmarked the events, once we have explored and bookmarked the events that are of interest uh, to us by the available full trees, which of course can also be uh, enhanced. So you can import your own full trees. Such functionality is supported by uh, Riot. As you can see here, you can import a full tree. So once you have selected the events of interest, the scenario planner is there for you to start building on the uh, scenario you may wish to explore. Now, the first thing to do is state the name of the scenario that uh, will be used, uh, uh, the, the, that will be built. So in our case, it is a test scenario with a description of uh, demonstrating, um, let's say, a scenario creation for this session or for this meeting. And now, as you can see, we are able to select what is called uh, a base scenario. Now, a base scenario is an attack-free scenario which includes the uh, business as usual performance of the system, the physical and the cyber topology. This is what uh, Dia previously mentioned as the, uh, the already installed uh, data for, for you to run. So uh, a system topology, a performance of the system attack free, and a cyber topology uh, is what defines the the scenario uh, which I have selected, which I so happen to know that this is the attack free uh, scenario that I want to use. Now, you can now save the main data regarding uh, to your scenario, but nothing is written in stone uh, for now and the mistakes are allowed. So I may choose to change the name and then save the uh, the changes. Now, as you can see, the event uh, field appear, meaning that the scenario planner has created the scenario instance and it is ready to be edited. Now, what we need to know about building a scenario in Riot is that the uh, beside the secondary information of the name, the description of the base scenario, <clears throat> the building block themselves of the scenario is the events. Each scenario can have one or many events with different characteristics. Now, in order to add uh, the events, we, we simply click the Add button. And now, uh, Riot, uh, can allows us to select from all the available events. <clears throat> uh, so what we need to do now is go from the 361 available events to the ones that are of interest to us. Now, in order to do this, we can apply uh, filters, which can start by saying that we want to explore destruction or interruption or manipulation of uh, assets which narrows down to 165 events uh, but then i may choose that uh, those must be found in the quantity full tree narrowing down further the uh, the number of events that are listed and then i may also wish to explore the tank sensor related events through uh, the the search, uh, the deep search capabilities of Riot. Now uh, I remember that I have bookmarked some, so applying multiple filters, removing, also applies at any time. So I choose to uh, go for the manipulation of a water distribution network tank level sensor. So uh, Riot now, after clicking next, tells, tells us that this generic event needs to be applied to a specific asset in order to be simulated. Now, the network to the network specific uh, 
George, we have some uh, problems with your microphone, perhaps. Can you check it? Okay. Uh, can you hear me now? Is it okay? Yes, now it's better. Okay. Uh, where did you miss me? The last sentence. Uh, yeah. Okay. As I was saying, keep a bit of your planner. Okay. I, I I think your internet is. Uh... Okay, there must there might be some some problems. Um, now is better. Is it okay? Okay, sorry for this. So uh, as I was saying, this is where we go from the generic to the network specific. This capability of the scenario planner uh, is that it reads the network topology. It finds the relevant assets and their IDs are defined as uh, provided in the file, and so no renaming occurs. And lets you select the asset that is going to be uh, the attack is going to be applied upon. So uh, you simply click the asset ID that you wish to uh, stress that you wish to attack, and this allows you to go from the generic fault trees and events. Uh, to be assigned to any network. Now, you can always uh, change, add, remove assets, etc., by uploading a, a new network, uh, and the scenario planner will still work. So, after having selected the asset, we go a step further, and now the scenario planner wants us to select the parameters. Uh, those parameters uniquely define the event in the scenario. So uh, in our case, uh, this in this step, actually, this is how the scenario planner uh, adds further detail uh, in order to build the scenario to be simulated. So in our case, uh, we can select the uh, duration of the uh, attack that an external person manipulates a tank 11 sensor, uh, specifically the one found in tank and the attack occurs for five hours, uh, showing uh, a value of, let's say, 2.5 meters. So uh, uh, the uh, the sensor reports back to the PLC and the SCADA that the tank has uh, 2.5, uh, two and a half meters of water uh, at height. And let's say that it starts at uh, five the afternoon now uh, 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 of the first day. Now those uh, are the parameters that define the attack to the specific uh, tank. After we have double checked the values, we can select to finish. And what this does is it registers the event of uh, it registers the event to the scenario. Now, for integrity reasons, the event is no longer editable, so uh, so as not to mess, let's say, with the database of the scenario. Uh, the event is assigned with a unique identifier, and the user can either accept it as part of the scenario or delete it and create a new event, uh, which uh, uh, with uh, the, the with the correct uh, parameters. So as we see here, we have an attack to tank, uh, to tank T2 uh, with uh, manipulation of the sensor. Now we may uh, wish to keep adding or changing the description. Uh, let's say demonstrating a tank sensor manipulation scenario creation for this meeting. And now it is registered and it is ready to be um, uh, analyzed. Now, uh, we can now the uh, scenario manager, which is uh, the part of the RAET that has all the, uh, all the scenarios uh, that has already been run or are ready to be executed. Now, you may see that there are several uh, uh, scenarios not yet uh, executed. Among uh, them, the one created uh, for this uh, session 
in order to demonstrate the uh, manipulation. Now, uh, simply by clicking the, uh, uh, actually, uh, uh, the, the running man button, it starts the simulation process seamlessly. So there is no need for additional work, importing or exporting scenario files. They are directly passed from the scenario planner to the suitable stress testing platform tool and the process starts. As you can see now, the scenario uh, has already started uh, the simulation. And now we can explore the other capabilities in the scenario manager window uh, related to the scenario, which is to see the related tools that can simulate these scenarios. You may choose to delete the scenario permanently, uh, or you may wish to clone a scenario and use it as, a, as the building block uh, for the addition of uh, new events and creation of more enhanced, uh, let's say, uh, scenarios. Now, let's say that we are going to use the ones that we have created, clone it. And as you see here, uh, we have the clone of the original, which now is editable. And we can go and add uh, an event, let's say a DOS attack in a pump, which occurs at the first pump of the system for, let's say, two hours at 10 o'clock at night. So this event is now registered to the scenario. It is saved and it is ready to, to run. So as you see, we can always uh, add and remove and create our own scenarios either from scratch or uh, uh, using previous scenarios as building blocks. And of course, we can always execute this as well. Now, uh, the after uh, the simulations have ended, and the scenarios are no longer editable, what we can do is actually explore the results and the effects that it has in the system. So our uh, simulated event, we can see that it affected the, the system for four hours and 143 nodes were affected. Uh, but a similar scenario with a higher duration actually had much more impact directly visible through uh, the comparison capabilities of the uh, uh, scenario manager uh, here. And uh, we can always see uh, relevant attacks or comparison with other attacks and explore the damage that has occurred to, to the system. Now, uh, this is only a first glimpse, let's say, of the attack. And in order to explore it in uh, greater detail, uh, we can start the, the KPI tool. Uh, through the button available uh, here. Now, uh, the, the KPI tool is a standalone executable, which uh, uses, which utilizes uh, the uh, KPI structure developed for Stop It. And as Dia mentioned, uh, and actually quite rigorously, <laughs> it, uh, it is based on the assumption of two service levels, one uh, which is related to a complete failure of the system. So uh, it is uh, equivalent to having uh, no supply at all. And one related to a more reputational damage with a lower pressure than expected. Uh, so uh, this the first time the KPI tool actually uh, runs in the in the VM, it takes uh, it, it takes it takes a while. And, uh, let's see. Uh, maybe I forgot to call it. Let's see here. Um, Stop it, okay. 
can see in that screen. Okay, yes, it is running. So, uh, what I wanted to, to show you is actually, uh, let's say, erase the, the default values of uh, the KPI tool. Uh, the first time you run the tool, uh, it actually pops up two warning messages. One related to the to the network would see uh, selected. So it asks us to select what the topology is, and one related to the business as usual scenario, which, as we said, is the one which represents the attack-free simulation. Now definable the upcoming uh, developments of Riot. This is going to be uh, an also seamless process where the user doesn't require to select any of the files. Do you hear me now? Uh, there are some issues with your uh, microphone, George, but uh, it's uh, improving at times. Can you just try again? The API tool quantifies the failure inflicted in the system using the, using the user defined uh, and thresholds, as Dia said. George, we seem to have a problem uh, with your, your connection or your microphone. Um, can you hear me now? Uh, yes, now it's a bit better. Okay, so. Uh, as I was saying, the selection of the districts uh, can either refer to the district meter areas as already used by the companies to monitor and control the specific areas separately, or it may refer to critical customer districts, like for example, the center of a city during an international event or part of the city where the government exists or are located. So, uh, and then apply the two thresholds that define the services as described in the presentation, one being the complete disruption of the uh, supply equivalent to the cutoff, or in quality terms, what will be the toxic uh, concentration of a substance, and one demonstrating the less critical, let's say, uh, services. Now, uh, the the user may uh, select to create the districts. So uh, in order to uh, demonstrate uh, this capability, I will select to create uh, a district named D1 with uh, specified le service level thresholds of 85 and 20. Now, what this means is that uh, uh, it, uh, let me say this first. This uh, uh, applies to each and every node in the district. So uh, having an 85% uh, upper value for the threshold means that uh, if a demand of, let's say, 10 liters per second uh, exists and the company and the system provides 8.5, it's perfectly acceptable, acceptable and okay. Now, uh, once we set the, thres the second uh, threshold to 20, what this means is for the same demand of 10 liters per second, providing less than two liters uh, is equivalent to being uh, cut off and raising a red flag for the, for the system. So uh, what we see is uh, from 85% to 100% uh, demand coverage is okay. From 20% to 85% is uh, the the yellow flag raising a warning uh, for the system. And below 20 is the red flag signifying a critical failure for the system. Now, uh, there are also critical thresholds that may be defined, and those are to explore key critical available times to react. Now, this is important uh, when assessing uh, failures that need uh, immediate response. And we may select uh, to set the parameters at 10 and 50%. So we need the tool to tell us how much time after the attack occurs do we have before 
10% of the supply is lost or 15% of the area is affected. And besides the, let's say, technical parameters uh, above, we can also have the absolute number of customers uh, that can be affected and the system will warn us. Now, we can create the district simply by clicking and selecting the border, the borders that uh, define it. And to close and uh, select the district, simply click on the uh, on the first point. Now, as uh, in red, so uh, so in KPI tool, nothing is written in. You can always uh, adjust the district. You can always uh, change the, the parameters uh, that define the district. So, uh, and change the name and change the, the parameters. And after everything is okay and you have double checked, you can simply double click on the polygon and the district is defined. Now, uh, what this means is that uh, the KPI tool has now registered this, uh, this area with a specific name and the specific thresholds defined by the user. And as you can see, the name here uh, disappears in order to signify that the, uh, let's say, District 2 uh, is ready to be created. Uh, we have selected to maintain the last used parameters in order uh, to uh, keep track of the user uh, perspective uh, that may be more relevant than any other default values. And of course, we can create uh, more areas. And in order to visually separate the, the districts, we can change the, the colors. And simply by refreshing, we can see that we have now defined uh, two areas. We can save it. Let's say I save it in the desktop. It's easier for me to find it there. So it's the, uh, the demo set. And we can now return back. Uh, what we can do is either send and communicate those districts to any other user using the, uh, the tool or import the ones that we have created and visualize them. Now, uh, you can always, uh, as we said, import. And for the purposes of our demonstrations, I, I will go with a much more detailed uh, uh, set of districts. So uh, now the tool is ready for our, uh, the uh, the parameters are ready for us to uh, perform the analysis at the district level. Uh, excuse me, I must first select the uh, scenario, which for our purposes is the last created uh, scenario uh, demonstrating the tank sensor ma manipulation. Okay. So as I said before, uh, this is a process that is happening at this version in future steps, uh, in future enhancements, no such steps will be uh, required. So uh, what the tool actually now does is uh, compare the uh, attack free performance of the system with the attacked system for every district for each and every parameter and threshold defined by the user. And it is ready to be visualized using uh, the main dashboard. A reminder of the topology selected uh, is also available. As you can see here. And just to explain the dashboard, what we see is a system performance overview, uh, a system performance lost overview for the system, 
in respect to the demand loss, to the total customer minutes loss, to the nodes affected, and for the service hours that this attack affected the system. We can see the time series for the uh, unmet demand, the peak value and the time of its occurrence, how the customer minutes lost are built, because in the, uh, in the case of uh, different slopes, a different uh, ratio of uh, the customer minutes will be found. And now the nodes uh, signifying the, uh, the number of, uh, of customer nodes affected and at what time uh, the peak uh, happened. Now, as you see on the top, you see a red line. This signifies the attack log, the, the start, the duration and the end of the attack. So we can either see this for the system or for each and every district uh, we have uh, created. So we may now go to the uh, performance metrics related to district meter area two, which let me remind you is this area on the top of the network, which as we can see here in the spatial overview is the one that is affected. Now, we can also uh, explore different areas or we can start seeing when the peak failure occurred, occurred uh, for the system, uh, which as, a, as the tools uh, suggest, occurred four hours after the event started and, uh, lost, and the system lost 27% uh, of the demand. Now, we may also see this for the spatial expansion of the failure, which unlike the supply occurred at half the time. So it occurred two hours after the event has started for the system level and uh, for the district of interest, the spatial extent happened uh, the, the big uh, extent happened three hours after the event has started and the supply four hours. Now, uh, the absolute values and the uh, percentage of them can also be seen here. And we may also explore in respect to the critical threshold uh, that we defined earlier as the 10 and 15 percent uh, lost so the system uh, now tells us that we only have two hours available to react before uh, more than 10 percent of the supply is lost uh, or uh, two hours uh, before the 20 percent of the system nodes are affected now all of these can be exported simply by clicking this button right here uh, in a report automatically created uh, by the by the tool and registered to the okay so here it is let me open it up and registered to the right database so we can see here the specifications and uh, such as the scenario number the date and our created by whom using what uh, PC. And we can see a table of content and overview, a written down explanation of what happened at the system and some special overview of the attack, uh, of, the, of the damage, let's say, of the attack. Now, this is only a preliminary uh, for, uh, format of the risk report and more enhancement are uh, to come. So after having reviewed the, the damage uh, at the system, uh, seen how much time available uh, we have, we may wish to explore uh, what are the available solutions that we have. Uh, so we can simply go, as you saw, uh, to the list of measures and have uh, a search. So I can select that I wish to explore a measure, 
related to an event. Uh, let's say that uh, affects uh, just sorry for this uh, the asset type right here, the sensor, which is the tank sensor, as we said, which was a manipulation. So now Riot has cleared out the number of measures that are related to a sensor manipulation, just like the event uh, we just saw. And the list of measures available within the, the system is now uh, here. Now we can always rank it based on the ID or uh, group them based on the risk reduction mechanism. And we can see that uh, in respect to essential manipulation, we may have uh, a plausibility check which is the realization of either automatic of ma or manual checks, etc., etc. Now, more details are <clears throat> are available uh, as we go in the uh, its uh, selection. So uh, we can see that we can have uh, cryptographic processes uh, applied if not already applied as a proactive action. Uh, against the tanks, uh, the, the sensor manipulation. Now, all these capabilities uh, close the, let's say, circle, the process of uh, identifying uh, a risk, creating and running a scenario, evaluating the damage that this scenario um, has to our system. I or anyone do. Uh, it also has additional capabilities, uh, such as the tools, uh, a list of tools available. And uh, we can uh, explore the available tools and the characteristics they have, or in future steps, and maybe perhaps with your ideas and knowledge on uh, simulation engines that are capable to simulate uh, relevant uh, scenarios and events, uh, we may add a tool, a description, and at the end, the capabilities that this tool has in order to let know of Riot how and what events uh, it can simulate. So uh, those are the main functionalities that uh, Riot has to offer for now. And as I said earlier, more uh, enhancements are yet to come. I remind that uh, stress testing platform is due to the end of, uh, of this month, if I'm not mistaken. So new tools uh, to simulate the cyber, physical damage, the cyber physical attacks and the damage applied to the system uh, will be available in a later version. So that's it for me. I'm sorry it took <laughs> so long, but as you see, there are many capabilities and uh, many pathways to, to explore the uh, uh, the right. So, uh, any questions? I said I I will leave my screen open in case we need it. Okay, Dimitris. Uh, yes, yes. Thank you, George. Let's uh, share, keep the screen of uh, George online. And uh, if you have any questions, let's actually start the discussion session. Uh, you've had three presentations. Uh, so far, some of them more specific to stop it to some of the more general about the work packages. Uh, would you like to uh, to ask anything to George or Dia or me and Mehdi? Any questions? Yeah. Okay, well, this is Patrick. Hi, Patrick. Can you uh, hear me? With the, the waterproof, uh, yeah. Hello. Yes. Um, so I, first of all, I'm I'm quite impressed on on how the work turned out. So that I'm really happy about that. Um, I was looking at the uh, fault tree, and what I noticed is that every event always has one cause. Is that because the the way the fault tree works, or um, and does that mean that we have multiple 
fall trees or multiple if uh, a single event multiple times in the fall tree or is there always just one cause for an event okay so uh can you hear me yes because I'm... <laughs> okay so uh hi from me um yes actually uh, what we have done for the uh stop it project is that we took the ridb and we recognize that the failures can either be related to a quality or a quantity issue so you can either open the tab and no water comes out or you can open the tab and some poor quality water uh, comes out so let's say of the uh, events and their effects uh, was done at this level now have uh, multiple rules and uh, as you see, uh, the same event can occur multiple uh, multiple times within yeah. the fall tree so um, let me find um, okay. Maybe I can find uh, one. I believe it's this one. Yes. yes. So as you see here, we have an event that the, it is a man in the middle attack that manipulates a pressing uh, a pressure boosting station. Uh, the actually the sensor signals. Now, this can lead to multiple uh, uh, events. So this is represented within the the fall trees. All the all the possible uh, uh, let's say connection and the the possible cascade from one uh, event to another, uh, we have tried to to capture it uh, at physical cyber and cyber physical level for both quality uh, as well for, for quality as well. So I'm, I'm I hope this answers the the question about the the fault structure and the multiply occurring events. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. All right. Thank just you, uh, Patrick, for clarify. this question. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sorry, Dimitri. Just to clarify this. No worries. Uh, Dia has already mentioned uh, those fault trees are the one created for stop it. Those are uh, generic fault trees, and uh, Riot has uh, devised a way to translate them. Support your own full as uh, I previously mentioned uh, using a tool that we also uh, use uh, provided by uh, kindly provided by the RISA partners and uh, it uh, within the the right structure all right thank you George for this uh, clarification are there any other questions George, I have one question, if I may, um, because I saw the, the fall trees a couple of times now, but it's still a very complex uh, structure. So uh, if a uh, water utility has a more simple uh, plan in its mind about specific events, say if they're only interested in uh, specific assets such as valves or pumps, can they simplify the fall tree to get a, a more uh, you know, workable version for their own uh, system? Simplifications are uh, always uh, can always happen, but um, actually, what we the fall trees is the most simple cascade throughout the urban water cycle. Uh, but uh, un uh, unless uh, you wish to add uh, some risks, uh, you may also utilize the deep search capabilities provided by the riot uh, as i previously demonstrated uh, in order to explore the events that you find more relevant for your scenarios so uh, if someone only wishes to explore the uh, let's say uh, destruction of valves the event is there so um, of course uh, any modification any changes any additions uh, can happen and the riot will still work 
but okay. All right. So the the deduction is done based on the on the current version of the fault tree. So the the uh, utilities are able to uh, search their, the assets they want to model and uh, just derive them from the general fault tree, let's say. Yes, of course, most okay. certainly. And yeah. of course, uh, with any uh, fault tree, the user wishes to import. So it works with custom fault trees as well, because I couldn't hear the beginning of the phrase. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Sorry for, uh, there must be a problem with my mic. Sorry for this. Yes, uh, Riot can work with uh, any fault tree as long as uh, a set of, uh, let's say, rules are followed uh, in registering the asset and the type of attack that uh, occurs. All right, thank you. So uh, you can upload your own fault tree file, let's say, but you have to make sure some uh, requirements are met. Yes, of course. And anyone wishes to, to do this, we can provide the, the details. All right. Thank you, George. Uh, do we have any other question from the, the other uh, follower utilities? No, I think uh, we don't have any further questions, but uh, uh, feel if free. If I may make uh, the yes. message. Yes, uh, yes, of course, make because there was no question from followers. Um, can you uh, again repeat what are the next steps so that now we have seen the uh, more detailed presentation, how we are going to proceed? I remember you, pro you, you talked about that during your, uh, yeah, you, 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 your big yes, yes, of course. Uh, talk. Can yes. you re redo it, please? I can share the screen, uh, George. I'll deprive you of your rights for a bit. I'm sorry. Anytime, anytime, yes. All right. So let me share the screen again. All right. So um, let's see the slide with the next steps because this was only the the webinar. Can you see my screen now, Mehdi? I think it's uh, can view it. Yes. Yeah. All right. So. Uh, we are past one, so we have uh, just completed the webinar and um, we are now in the discussion section, let's say. So the next step will be after this that uh, we will fill another doodle, let's say, uh, with the availability of both uh, George, who will be the supporter for the next step, and the uh, followers themselves, the, the people from uh, selected from the follower uh, what are utilities that would like to do the hands-on uh, time with the virtual machine and I will open a number of days of possibilities for uh, for the followers. The followers will have to choose uh, one daily slot each and these slots will have to be different so uh, this will be in a first come first serve ratio like uh, the early birds <laughs> will get the best slot probably but we will have an, a number of open slots, uh, a lot of them and uh, then each follower will have a full day to actually access the VM the way that Dia and George have uh, explained to you and will have access to the uh, educational material as well. So uh, you can also consult the educational uh, material prior to getting the access of the VM. That's actually recommended because then you'll have fewer questions. You can spend more quality time uh, uh, accessing multiple functionalities and seeing uh, what is happening with multiple tools such as the Fault Tree Viewer and the KPI tool, etc. Um, then uh, during that day, George will be available a number of fixed hours, uh, say some hours in the morning and some hours in the afternoon, to guide you through a process as well as to solve any technical issues that you have. Um, so this is the support that you will get. And once every follower has completed this uh, daily uh, session uh, with uh, hands-on experience on the VM, uh, we're actually going to uh, uh, complete a feedback form. So uh, I will send an email and with the template and ask you from each follower to complete the assessment form of this uh, whole training event. So what have you learned? Uh, what are your... Uh, uh, any extra questions, any extra points you would like to improve uh, with regards to the training material itself, uh, but also a feedback on the Stop It platform. Uh, this feedback is, is also obtained uh, in Word Packet 7. 
but this assessment four wheel will also f concentrate on the training event itself so what you would like to see uh, if you would like something change etc so it's also internal to us and when we have this uh, assessment form complete, uh, this event will be uh, completed, uh, let's say. And then we'll wait, uh, we'll design more events in, uh, in the months to come. Once we also have information uh, and mature products from uh, work packets five and six, let's say. So this is it. Okay. In, uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, if I may, so uh, the link to the Doodle will be sent to the followers. Yes, exactly. Uh, each follower, each follower will choose uh, its options. You know, uh, when are you going to provide that link? Uh, when uh, do you this think is, that you can this do will that? be done in the days uh, that are coming. So by Tuesday, you will have a new Doodle uh, set up, and uh, you will be able to choose your dates. Okay. Then uh, are we providing? I know the answer, but uh, just for confirmation. Are we providing the manuals and the, the uh, you know, how to conduct the, uh, the decision that when the, the, youth, the followers, they connect themselves to the virtual machines? Are we providing the material uh, like many times or let's say uh, like a couple of weeks before their uh, selected date? so yes. that they can go through the materials and have a feeling about uh, what will happen? Yes, exactly. Uh, but the material will be provided uh, a few days after the doodle is set up because then we have to wait for people to fill it up. And then I'll uh, contact uh, Dia and we'll uh, arrange this so that we uh, upload the latest version of the material, also including this webinar, uh, perhaps uh, to the follower utilities. Yeah. I have a question also from George. Uh, uh, if one of the Georges, they can answer. Um, past experience with the front runners, some of uh, those guys, they had some small issues uh, of connectivity to virtual machines. Uh, do you think that uh, we can, so because we are giving here one day access to each follower, as understood, and uh, that can be short. Uh, so so uh, do you think that we can solve uh, that, uh, you know, uh, as we go in a short matter of time? Hello? Can you hear can me? Can you hear me? Okay, do you hear me? Oh, yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, George Kiros, uh, yeah. Ah. Hi, hello from my side. Uh, yes, I'm the other George. Uh, I'm sorry, I seem to have some uh, problems with my microphone previously. Now I hope you can uh, hear me, all of you. Um, we are um, imp constantly improving our uh, system. So uh, in the last uh, days we have uh, been involved in the development of the stress testing platform and all new developments will be eventually uh, going to the uh, virtual machines of the front runners and the followers so we might have uh, some issues from time to time um, okay and we hope very much that uh, you can support us uh, to improve the the products with your help by identifying some, uh, uh, maybe some uh, issues that we might still have. And we are here to give you all the support we, you need in order to accomplish your tasks. Um, did I answer to your question? Um, uh, yes, so I understand the connection uh, will go smoothly, uh, I hope so, for everyone, because one day can be quite short uh, to, you know, to, for them to uh, really deep dive into the uh, virtual machines. But uh, let's see what will happen. And if, if there is any... Yeah, go ahead. Uh, uh, so, uh, sorry, Mehdi, if I may add, this is Dia. So uh, let me ask uh, one question first. Do we plan to have only one day, uh, or I thought it would be two? 
just to clarify this, now that we are all the interested parties together. And uh, the other comment that I have is that um, we know that uh, some issues might come up. So uh, this is the reason uh, for which uh, George Moraitis, especially and George Karavokiros, will be up and running uh, the days that uh, the followers will have access to the VM. So George uh, Moraitis, for example, will be available early uh, in the morning, let's say, when the followers will start uh, accessing uh, the tools to be available to have uh, a Skype or to chat with them right away and instantly in order to resolve any issues that might come up. Okay, may I, uh, I will answer your first comment. I think initially we decided that it will be two, but uh, mm -hmm. I was not involved in the discussion with ICCS and I think Demetrius was, I'm not sure. Um, and that's uh, why I ask, uh, because in the presentation it is one day. So, yes, yes, uh, exactly. No, the, dis the initial discussion was one day as, as a generic slot, time slot uh, of a full access to the VM. But of course, it can be two if uh, the VM system and uh, its slots permit so. So if there is, there are, you know, there is enough uh, time comfort and also the VM is fully online and there is enough time and enough slots, of course, we can make it more. So two days is also a valid uh, time frame, I think. Great. Dimitris, is Rita here? Hello. Hello, oh, Rita. Yes. Um, hello. Yes. Uh, just uh, on this, uh, remember also that the uh, virtual machine are available uh, until 16 of December. Exactly. This yeah. is this is exactly. why. So yeah. that means also you need to fit inside this slot as uh, much as possible. Otherwise, yes. we will find another plan. But uh, if it is possible, I would appreciate to have the exercise done by then. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. If this... not, uh, if you say it is difficult, just let me know and we try another solution. But uh, let's try to to stay within the period of the license. Mm -hmm. and this is why uh, we opted one day. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Yes, I understand. Mm -hmm. You see, you check uh, the options uh, based on the availability of the colleagues and then uh, exactly. we can take it. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. But okay, uh, um, sorry. Um, personally, since uh, uh, it happens so rarely that we can uh, talk all together, also with the followers, we had a lot of discussion with different runners, but a uh, few events with the followers. Um, I would be happy to have some first impression. Doesn't mean questions, but uh, it would be nice to go have like a word from uh, each. Uh, follower to just understand if this is what they expected or what they uh, what is a kind of immediate uh, um, reaction on the, what has been presented and if they consider this can be actually useful as a training session for the risk managers in their company also because we would need to uh, explain the feedback of the followers also as part of the report that has to be done after this session. <clears throat> can, we do, can we do that? Uh, Hi, this is uh, Yes? Yes, yes. Um, I, I was impressed by, by the tool. It seems to do already a lot of things and seems to be uh, quite uh, customer friendly. Um, so, um, yeah, my my first impression is positive. Um, what I'm wondering is, um, and we will be able to to play with the tools with a a data set that's in it. Um, mm -hmm. What kind of data set would we need to to import into it to use it ourselves for? Uh, uh, so it's a Epanet. It's based on the Epanet uh, modeling. And um, so it's just an export from Epanet, or can you tell me something more about the data set that, that you use for it? Mm -hmm. Yes, of course. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you hear me at first? Because I yes. seem to have yes, yes, of yes. course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my mic. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yes, for now, uh, the data sets that are uh, available within the uh, VM 
uh, they are ready for you to use and play and explore the tools, get familiar uh, with it. But uh, yes, it is an internet based uh, solution and an export from the ePanet, a simple, do, uh, a simple imp file uh, will be needed for the topology. Uh, but there is also a specification regarding the um, the site. <laughs> and a new file might be needed for this, but uh, once the uh, the tools are ready to, to be used by you using your own data sets, um, uh, we will make sure that uh, we will provide the data wish list, let's say, uh, that is required to run. Uh, but those are the, the main parts. Uh, regarding the VMs, the tool for you to play with uh, the, uh, the data sets ready. Okay, thank you. So to, to re reinforce a bit the, the answer of George, uh, there is a toy model topology uh, inside that's uh, ready for you. This is the, the example data that George also used. So uh, you will be able to see this uh, all these tools with uh, this toy data. And uh, in the next step that you want to adapt this uh, tool to your own network, you will need the input file from Epanet or you can export it from uh, your own model that you use, such as uh, Infoworks, etc., and you will also need uh, a, file, a CPA file which specifies the cyber layer of the system. This is a simple mm -hmm. file, and probably you will have help on how to, uh, to formulate it exactly through the corresponding uh, educational material itself. So these yeah. are the, the the two drivers of the engines, let's say, in these tools. And keep in mind that this, these are the requirements only for the Word Package 4 tools that we are dealing in the strategic and tactical layer of risk. In the final product of Stop It, you will have more tools and possibly uh, more uh, layers of information that you will need to put, let's say. So this is it, I think. But yes, for, for our tools, we try to keep things simple and try and integrate everything in... Uh, a manner that requires less effort from the from the users. So, right. Thank you, George. Uh, are there any other followers who would like to add something about their experience? Uh, you will be called to uh, to assess uh, with the with the form. So, uh, any feedback now would be also very useful for us. Perhaps. Uh... We do, sorry, I, I, maybe, yeah. maybe just yes. let me interrupt you. This is Dominic from yes. Hessen Wasser. Hi, Dominic. Uh, Hello. Um, we just had the impression that all these theoretical background information about um, the real tools are maybe too complex to to show them before the tool by itself. So maybe I would put it the other way around, um, first show uh, mm -hmm. maybe shortly the, the tools and how to use them and then maybe, and only if needed, the background information, what uh, is behind. I can understand your, your idea, but I think for um, smaller mm -hmm. or some utilities, um, it is too complex to see all the background. How, it, um, how, how did you develop it? It's good to see, but I think it's too much information. Yes. So uh, skip, skip the uh, next time. <laughs> uh, the plan, uh, Dominic, uh, we agree with you from Work Package 8 perspective, because mm -hmm. this is the first time that followers are normally, you know, deep diving into the details of work package for tools you know and mm -hmm. it may it, ta it makes it a little bit uh, i would say too much but the plan is that we showed you how things are as for now then you will get uh, the 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 uh, opportunity to play with the virtual machines and next time uh, in a work package 8 uh, b monthly meeting we will have a, another session where we will discuss about your experience in details and where we need to actually improve uh, based on the outcome of the evaluations that you will make uh, at the end of playing with the virtual machine. 
you know we will discuss the ways that we need to improve the training method the, the training uh, actually uh, materials and also how it is being carried out mm -hmm. So yeah. uh, there we will also again go into the details of, let's say, the methodological aspects, you know. Uh, so uh, because this would be some of your questions will be why in the tool things are like that, you know, or why I cannot change it, you know. And that touches uh, a little bit the methodology, the approach and how things have been developed. So we have that on mind uh, and we know that it would a little bit be a little bit too much let's say but mm -hmm. uh, coming once uh, with all the tools of work package four you know and making the those available to not just followers but also front runners uh, that that is I, I agree with you that is a little bit challenging at the beginning but once you go inside the details uh, I'm quite sure that uh, uh, we can answer your questions you know afterwards mm -hmm. Okay, uh, if you. I may add, if I, if uh, I may add, add to to this also that uh, one of the principles uh, we have followed here in uh, Riot and in the scenario planner in particular is to make uh, things for the end users as simple as possible. So one way to do this is to hide the technical details of the. Um, of the simulation tool, for instance, um, and present a user interface that is more intuitive for, for the um, scenario manager. Mm -hmm. And so that he is no longer, um, um, it's not longer needed to deal with the um, formats of files, for instance, for input files for the uh, simulation tools to run them and uh, just check uh, also the, the various um, files of outputs they produce. So this is done for you by the scenario planner, hopefully in a way that is more user friendly for you and you can figure out better in a better form how to develop scenarios and how to assess the results based on specific uh, metrics and KPIs. But you are going to tell us if uh, this uh, has succeeded and uh, if uh, we are in a, um, uh, in a good way uh, in, this, in this goal. Thank you, George, for the input. Um, to also to uh, to have a bit the timing in mind, since we have the the hard deadline that uh, Rita described on the 16th of December, uh, we will try to run the doodle that we uh, we described before uh, Monday, Tuesday next week. So we expect uh, we expect it to be filled at the end of next week, and. Uh, with due pressure, of course, and this only leaves us one week to try. So uh, the two-day scenario is uh, kind of, uh, of very comfortable, but we will have slots uh, early on as well. So the early birds will probably get more time uh, regarding yeah. the followers. But at least let's let's have a minimum of one day for each follower to have uh, an experience on the VM. And some followers, if there is enough time, uh, they can also have two days, let's say. So the hard deadline for uh, filling in the doodle is uh, the end of next week. That's yes. what you are. Yes, I, I will send it um, Monday and uh, then it will have to be filled uh, as soon as possible. It's better because I will open, uh, maybe I will open some slots on Thursday or Friday, depending on the avail availability of uh, George from ICCS. George, what would you say for the coming two weeks? Are you available? And uh, you, will, you will also fill your doodle time as well. This is very important. Yeah. Mm. Uh, due to the uh, license restriction and due to the, uh, let's say, pressure to uh, do this in time, uh, yes, and to provide and support. Yes. Available uh, early morning. Uh, 
from early from the early morning of the demonstration phase uh, of the uh, of the followers uh, test uh, days uh, up to the the afternoon. So uh, if anything happens during the the access to to the VM or any questions occur, I will make sure I have my new mic by then so we can communicate better. All right, yes, please do invest in hardware. No, it's needed for the mic. Like Friday, besides, yes. Okay. Uh, and for, for from the followers' perspective, I might add, please uh, have in mind that this is going to take place in the coming weeks. It's going to be a bit intensive at times, but uh, at the end, we only we need some time to fill the doodle from you in one day, uh, at least one day or two days, if you are eager to, uh, to be more active in this process. And then we'll need some time from you to fill the form. Uh, what would be best uh, is to, to assign, let's say, one specific contact person that will go through this whole process. If he was like in the user profile of type two that we described, if he's like a risk modeler or a, a risk manager, that would be uh, would be the best. Uh, or if you are that interested, you can also assign a small team, but please keep it consistent so the people who will fill the assessment forms are the actual ones who have experienced uh, um, the VM and also this webinar. Hmm. Yeah, good. All right, this so... Dominic, Dominic yes. from Hessen, after I can. Yes. Just want to mention that it is for, I think for most of the, the utilities, it is too shortly to plan the next two weeks, something to do with one or two days. It doesn't have to be the whole day, uh, but it has to be one day where you will have more time to explore the VM and log in and explore some of the tools. I, I don't know how, how the others are thinking, but for us, mm -hmm. it's, it's not possible. Uh, it's not possible to reserve uh, the, a minimum of one day, let's say. Uh, the, this day, this day is not for you to be fully there. It's uh, just for the VM to be available. I just want to mention that this could be a restriction. Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree. But uh, the thing is that uh, we were a little bit delayed, Dominic, and uh, considering the other aspects of the project and we have a kind of obligation to uh, to have this session uh, as soon as possible with regards to the design of the project uh, but as i said this will not be the last time that you are playing with the virtual machine because they they would be uh, we will make a plan but they they would be available uh, uh, the tools actually for you to use your real data if necessary, you know. So as for now, what we ask is that you put a little bit of time to play with the virtual machine. And I understand that this is the end of the year. Uh, everyone is very busy, but uh, that is the best plan that we could make, you know. Uh, we had also some limits from our side. <laughs> But we can try with the doodle and then see how things develop, Dominic, and say the reason is that uh, um, what uh, Dimitrios uh, explained is that uh, we, Syntef is uh, renting somehow or paying the use of a cloud service to make this uh, training uh, possible, both for the followers and the front runners. And uh, we buy this uh, service uh, for one month and uh, um, until now the front runners has been using the uh, service and uh, it took a bit longer for them to because they were testing more than just uh, having a training session they were really doing hands-on work so exactly for the same reason uh, as you mentioned they couldn't work on it every single day of course so we arrived a bit late and now the machine are available for you and as i said at the beginning Let's try with a doodle. We see if it is possible to find, uh, uh, to book, to reserve the service at least one day for each of you, which means we are reserving the cloud service. And then during this day, uh, to run the session with the support uh, as a training session, not as a 
working session as for the front runners but as a training session you can do it probably in two hours or in six hours depending on how much you want to dig into it and then as i said at the beginning if you see that this is, is, is impossible i just need to know and then we will find an alternative so i'm just asking to try to see if we manage to have uh, this uh, process uh, with your help and with your uh, understanding and availability but uh, of course uh, there are other priorities so if we don't manage to do this uh, for all the followers uh, then uh, Dimitris will tell me and we will find uh, an alternative but that's a second step mm. Exactly, but uh, let's try to uh, to make use of the actual month that we have this cloud service because we would uh, do this for Workpack at 7, but as, as we said, we take advantage of the technologies uh, of Workpack at 7 and Workpack at 8. So this is a prime opportunity to do a training activity that actually has a, a, a hands-on experience for you. So uh, what is important is to have a first impression on the on the VM and we don't ask you to be there the full day. Uh, we do ask you to spend a bit of time uh, along with George, who is also like uh, taking a lot of time in this to uh, to guide you through the process and to have something which, which is a better experience than just uh, presentations and webinars from our side, let's say. Um, so, Can uh, you ask uh, something? No. Yeah, yes, yes, of yes. course. Um, because the water companies don't have full days to spend and mm -hmm. we have little time to plan. Is it better to just plan half days or is that not possible? I think uh, the, the only uh, thing that's limiting is that the these slots, they can be half days, have to be exclusive only to one follower. So uh, you, you two, two groups are not able to join in because we have the same login details. We have only one account. Uh, but so in then you have... Sorry? Because people no, have the time is, in the agenda, then you have more yes. flexibility on planning the... Exactly. Yes, yes, exactly. So we, we could do this in half days as well. Then I will open uh, half days instead, but you will have to pick uh, a few, a number of them uh, in these uh, days. And then it can be possible that uh, half a day, the, the morning will be uh, one follower, the afternoon will be another. Let's say. I yeah. think... Uh, it's it's still possible, but it will be exclusive, and you will only have half the day then to to explore the machine. But you can always pick another half day uh, later on. And as as a point, please uh, uh, don't really limit yourselves. If you have enough time, just pick many half days. Uh, we want to see the more options that we have open, the the, the better it is for us to plan uh, different followers accessing the VM. Okay. All right, thank you for this uh, clarification. Uh, a question, it's just an, an online view on this virtual machine and we do not have to make any technical things at our network here. Is that right? No. Mm -hmm. uh, George, yes. I, think, yes. I think you only need a Windows machine that has a remote desktop, desktop application in okay. if I'm not mistaken. Exactly. Uh, just in case uh, the company has uh, restrictions in connecting to the internet, because you may work on a uh, PC that is in the inter in the, the only the internal network of the company, uh, you may ask for permission to to uh, to enter the the internet because the uh, remote desktop, uh, as you see, links to to the. But uh, other than that, no, uh, no additions, no installations, no nothing. This is the okay. default because window. This is what we were thinking, that we have to make some installations or connections to our system, and this would be a restriction. No, 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 no. No, 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 it is Windows. This is, <laughs> this is the reason why we are late, because this was a required, strong requirement of different runners, so we have to shift and make all this happen in this way, yes. Uh, so <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. Then I think it's it, it doesn't matter where we are, and then no. they mm -hmm. should be no problem. All right. Yes. Then the, that's uh, that's good. Yeah. The, we, it's very easy to access the VM, uh, and there's also a lot of material, and there will be support from George. Um, 
So um, to conclude, uh, let's. I will make it in half days uh, with the doodle, so you will have more flexibility. I know your busy schedules, and you will be able to pick different half days. But please pick at least two of them, so you have a full day, two half days to to explore the VM. And if you would like to be more engaged, pick multiple, pick a number of them, maybe four. And if there is time, I will give access to uh, to multiple days for the interested followers. Let's say. Um, are there any other points before uh, concluding the meeting, uh, the webinar today? I'm just. Uh, do you hear me? Yes, yes, of course. As long as we are all here, uh, I hope that Skype uh, fits everybody. So as to have any communication regarding the uh, the, the VM and the connections, etc. Um, I I think that. Uh, Skype would would be okay for everybody. Is there any? Is it Skype for business? For for yes, yes. Is it mm. Skype for business? It's for the, it's for it's for it, okay? it. Yeah, uh, it's for okay for Masagra, and this will be for the support session. So we cannot really reserve go to meeting slots for this. Uh, but it will be a one on one with George, uh, the followers uh, through Skype for business. I think that's okay with everyone. Does anyone object? For us, it's okay. The it's water group, yeah. Yeah, it's okay. All right. Well, uh, if we have any, if we don't have any other points, uh, Rita or Mehdi, then uh, I think we can conclude this webinar. Uh, I want to thank all of you for your time. I know it was a long time today, but uh, hopefully it's exciting. And uh, I would like to, uh, I'm looking forward for the next steps, let's say. And uh, please fill the doodle in time. And we will talk to you again soon. So thanks all of you for, uh, for your time today. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Dimitris, for organizing Bye -bye. this. And, uh, and uh, I'm also yeah. looking forward for the next steps. Yes, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. And thanks to the presenters as well for their time. Uh, the webinar will be uh, given to you in a video form uh, after the end of it. This will be part of the training material of Word Package 8 as well. Thanks. Uh, have a nice weekend. Bye. Same to you. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye-bye.